Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. You're watching live or tape version of this show, which will be coming on during the week, a show called Conversations with Fred. We bring in the interesting men and women who live in Queen Anne's County and are doing everything they can to make our community better. And it's a good chance we're going to talk positive things. I don't know about you, I spent the last year and a half hearing about some tragedies that are going on locally and around the world. We need some good news to get us feeling good and positive again. I'm delighted to have with me today Mr. Tim McClowski, Town Council, Queen Anne, or Centerville, uh, Town of Centerville. Tim, I'm so, you survived the meeting last night. You're fresh, you're ready to go, right? I am. Do me a favor. Uh, I've lived in Centerville now 40 plus years. You guys are, and women are doing some wonderful things. Share with us some of the great things that are going on in our county seat. Excellent. We'll, we'll do. Well, thanks to you, Fred, and thanks to QAC TV. This is a great venue. I'm, I'm honored to be the inaugural guest on your conversations with Fred, and, and hopefully uh, this, this will go well. You know, we're, we're getting outside of the COVID thing right now. Hopefully, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, you know, it's been it's been a tough time for everybody, but yes, I think has. that we are very optimistic. Okay. The town has been very fortunate uh, over the past six months or so with some of the stimulus money that we've received. In fact, our, our Main Street program has been just going gangbusters. Okay. We've, we've okay. applied for and received a lot of grants. One in okay. particular was a, it's 130 some thousand dollars to help out the local businesses uh, with just whether it's PPE or helping them with rent or whatever it might be. We just gave out, I think it was 35 checks to local businesses here in Centerville, Good. ranging from $2,000 to $3,500. Right. We've got a second round going as well. So the federal money is coming to Centerville. People will say, right. I'm paying taxes, I'm getting no benefits. We're seeing the benefits yep. right on Main Street USA here in Centerville. Absolutely. This, right. it's, it's actually the state money, but I'm sure that it does come down from the federal government. Okay. Um, in addition, we were able to get, uh, it, it's like a credit card bonus. So we are able to take some of that money and, and we've got these debit cards that you can purchase. And when you buy a, a debit card, right. like if it's a $100 debit card, you get a $40 one for free. Oh, wow. So these are to be spent within the town of Centerville. And it's just a, it's a great way to help promote businesses. Sure. It's a great way to help get that economic stimulus that's going as well. So Tim, that's one of the let me ask you, how are our businesses doing? I mean, it looks like to me Edwards Pharmacy is always going to do well. How are our restaurants doing? How's my favorite ice cream parlor, just to mention? How are we doing as a town? I, think? I think they're going to be doing much better soon, right? Okay. I mean, we're still coming out of the winter. Uh, you right. know, one of the things we did is we expanded the sidewalk out there on uh, on Commerce Street. Yes. You're starting to see these businesses having uh, having tables outside. People are sitting outside. Having patrons yeah. outside. Um, you know, so so the, there's lines, right? The, the ice cream shop, there's always a line. I can never explain these Line. Is ice cream that good? I, I have to start eating ice cream it's again. It's great. I'm good. You know, and, and the other thing is you drive through town on a Friday night and there's park, people are parking all over the place. It used to be when you nothing. would drive through town and there was nothing. Yes. And now when there's cars that are parked there, you know that they're either going down to the downtown restaurants or they're going to get some ice cream. Okay. Or they're spending and there's time. movement on the street again as the nights are getting and the days are getting a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. and that's, So that's good to know. Very good. Yep. So, you know, there's some other great stuff that's happening. The, um, the YMCA, right? The YMCA has been in the, in the works for a very long time. It's going to be right across the field here, correct? Yep. Uh, they've, they're, they're doing fantastic on fundraising. They just came before last month, the Planning Commission. They received their final site plan, uh, which is the major hurdle for them to really kind of get right. going and, and start digging. There's, there's a couple other things they need to get done, but they're anticipating sometime early this summer to really get started. Start digging in. When's the completion date? Is that a year away? I think it's away? about 18 months is when they're saying. There's okay. a couple of phases. There's an, there's a phase one is the main building. They've got an inside pool, and then phase two would possibly be an outside pool. Oh, wow. So they're going to try to do it in phases, depending on the amount of money that they raise. But I'm, I'm optimistic that it's going to happen and it's okay. going to get done soon. This part of town is all of a sudden coming alive. We've got the county, uh, this building, the Vincent building we're in. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've got the middle school, you've got the high school, you have the whole Acme shopping center. With a Y, I see this part of town being very interesting in terms of growth. Absolutely. And, you know, the, it's, it's made that much easier to get here with the overpass now that we've Yo, got easy, out on 301. Yes. Right. That's going to bring people directly into here if you're coming from out of town. If you want to go to, if you, if you know, if you want to go to the YMCA, and you're coming up from, from Kent Island, it's much easier to come in that way rather than go through townward. So Tim, let me, let me just ask a question. I know you got a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to do all that. That's all good. Uh, as I look at the town, okay, we talked about this. Is there, are there plans? Okay, we're going to get a Y. We've got the Vincent building. We've got this two schools. We've got a shopping center. 
Does the town see this as a growth area? I mean, will we go, what, what's, what are the plans for this? And we'll go right around the, we'll do the whole compass around the town here. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, this, this corridor here is one of the growth areas, right? Okay. And there's, there's um, this is what we would call a mixed use, right? So in the, in the, the part, the frontage that's up near the street, that's going to be more intense uses like commercial, institutional, you know, you've got a government building, you've got a YMCA. Right. The, the county owns two pad sites as well that who knows what they're going to do with at some point, but it could be a business. It could be a, a new board of ed, you know, building. I mean, okay. there's there's op a lot of options. Uh, and then as you go further back from there, right, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's going to be more. Eventually, it's going to be more towards the single family residential, that kind of thing. And then that continues out towards uh, 301. Okay. Draw How long that's going to happen? Who knows, right? Draw a boundary for me. Right now, the town limits go to what? The high school. Uh, where, the, where it says state well, where it's the, the middle sign. school, oh, okay. the middle, so the middle school and the uh, the service center okay. are all that that whole side is is in the town. Limit. Oh, that's in the town. Yeah. I mean, do is there thoughts that uh, has anyone? Say, I mean, might we go all the way to three hundred one day three hundred one, or is that just? I mean, those good? are those are in the in the comprehensive plan, the two thousand nine comprehensive right. plan. That is a growth corridor. That's go out to three hundred one, but okay. they would have to be annexed into the town, okay. right? And it depends on if if the town has water and sewer allocations. Right. if there's that political will to bring them in and if the property owners want to actually bring them in. Okay. So it's on the plan and the, our planning commission is actually going through an exercise now to update that. It's All been right. you know, 12 years or 11 years. So there, it's on the plan more as a here's a planning exercise as opposed to there's there's no plans for any annexation okay, but that's of a, any property it's been respect. talked about and maybe one day we'll go that way how about if we let's do our compass thing if we go up 213 we go to northbrook mm -hmm. and is that where the line is right now for the, the line town? is at the north how the north about part would, of, you see the town ever going up 213 or no, no so so we have a concept called a green belt and okay. so around the existing town and around the growth areas in our comprehensive plan we have a notion of of a green belt which is areas that that we should not green areas, right. The county owns the property right above uh, where North that park, park is, and which nice is park. Greenfield Farm. And right, so right. that's a preserved park forever. Okay. And it's very unlikely that the town would ever grow on top of that. So okay. that's a nice way to kind of demarcate that line of the northern part. Oh, it's of nice town. to have that great green area beyond the north. Park. Yeah. How about now? We'll go back to your list, but let's go back, uh, continuing on our compass. Let's go down to the wharf area. Uh, right now, we stop at the Corsica River. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Any I, any thought of more development on the wharf or going from? No, no, okay. So it's that's very kinda, unlikely. I mean, that okay. again is also one of those green belt areas. I mean, okay. most of those properties out there, uh, they've they're they're large lots. You know, large lot subdivisions. They've all got their own wells and, and sewer and okay. or, excuse me, septic. So there's really no no interest no or to need to have them come into okay. town. And one more place on my map. Let's go uh, up 213, going the other way past Symphony Village, mm -hmm. uh, up to three. Any. So plan? once again, that's also part of the green belt. I mean, okay. you could conceptually conceptually see some type of very very low impact, possibly right around where the uh, you know where 213 and 301 come together. Right. But again, that's outside of town. And, you know, I, I, as, a, as someone who represents the, town, the taxpayers of Centerville, I want someone to come into town versus just stopping okay. right there and, and being on Makes their way. Sense. Follow up question, I'm going to let you go back to your list. Dunkin' Donuts, that field behind it, I think there's a for sale sign or for development sign next to the food line complex, I call it. Any p near future plans for any development there? Or? You know, we, uh, we're hopeful, right? I mean, the, the developer, the owner of that property has been, uh, has been working on getting uh, some type of business park usage that's going in there for a long time. Okay. Dunkin' Donuts, as you know, is probably one of the most popular stores. Lord, I spend my whole day there and the traffic never stops yep. there. It never yep. stops. We do actually have a, uh, there's, a um, there's a facility that's all the way in the back. They built a, a, a giant warehouse back in 2008 that had been vacant for a long time, but now we've got a, a business that's in there, okay. and they actually just expanded out. So, so there, there is There's some, growth. some work that's going on back okay. there. And hospice is also growing as well. They're right back there, and they're putting in an addition as well. Okay. Well, let me, you continue with your list. Good. Thank you for taking me around. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> so, you know, we were talking initially about downtown, right? Mm -hmm. And so fixing the look of downtown is an important one. We've, we've got the expanded sidewalks. We've been very fortunate with Main Street to get what we call, what are called facade improvement grants. And to date, we've, we've been able to give out over $200,000 of facade improvement grants. Good. So this very is good. if a business owner or a property owner wants to uh, put up an awning or paint their facility There's or put available. up a sign, 
we can actually give them the money to do that. Okay. We, we just had a property that's actually on um, in the downtown area that's been dilapidated for a while. They're going to get a $15,000 grant. So Good. they're going to really improve what it looks like uh, for the whole downtown area. And, and I think it looks great, right? The, the county courthouse it's a pretty town. looks it's a beautiful. Pretty town. Uh, you know, the, 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 the old county courthouse is beautiful as well. And so it, it just looks fantastic. Tim, as you know, me and Coach Nesbitt sit in front of that courthouse every day with a cup of coffee. The foot traffic in Senegal still amazes me. Besides mm -hmm. going into your office, the lawyer's office, uh, it's a vibrant little town, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's very unique. Any other plans for downtown? Well, we've got the, um, uh, the, the farmer's market is going to be opening up again. I think they're going to have a hybrid model. Some of it's going to be, okay. we're actually going to have farmer's market days where you can actually go there. And there's also going to be, they were very successful last year with the pickup. The vendors liked it. The people liked it because the vendors knew exactly how much they had to prepare, okay. how much they had to sell. Did you call in your order before? You did it all online. Oh, terrific. Okay. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was, it was really great. The other thing that's helped out this year is, is the council has recently gone from three to five members. Right. right. We went through the charter change last year. We had an election last year. There were, there were nine candidates, as you know. Which was good. That was good for democracy. That was Correct. a very good sign for our little town. Yep. Yes. And, and we, uh, we elected four new members, uh, and they have just been fantastic. Good. They've, they've good. really jumped in. They're really looking at, uh, at learning and, and coming up to speed, and I, I couldn't be happier. I mean, it's, really, been a, it's a really great team. You've enjoyed it. You've I really have enjoyed it. Yep. Good. Um, High speed internet. So we've got a, a company from uh, Chestertown, uh, Talkie Communications, is now coming down and doing rolling out fiber high speed internet. They've done almost all of Northbrook, and yeah. the plan is to come through town as well. So it will give you an alternate high speed from whether it's satellite or cable TV that you have right now. So I think that's that's a great one as well, and that's yes. going to be helpful, especially with all the people that are going to be that are going to be working remotely. And the whole workplace well. has changed, hasn't it? Mom oh, yeah. and pop are no longer renting buildings to work out of. We're doing it right at home, right? So that's going to be a big improvement. Yep. Good. Yep. Good. Last week, we had a um, our annual Arbor Day celebration. Mm -hmm. That was one of the best ones that I've ever you been to. You had a nice so, crowd. You had a so, nice crowd. So every year, as you probably know, you're on the Parks Board, we hold uh, an Arbor Day celebration the last Friday in April, and, and we typically do it with the second grade classes of Centerville Elementary. They were great. They and were we, great. we have a couple of trees, and this year we did it at Centerville. Elementary. We have the holes for the trees. The, we, the trees were donated this year. And this year we did it in honor of Jack and Nancy Cover, who are lifelong Which members very recently nice. passed Which away. Very nice, right? Nancy was a long-term teacher, and Jack did all the original plantings at Centerville mm -hmm. Elementary. Mm -hmm. And to me, one of the greatest parts is you get the young kids involved, and we actually, once we set the trees in... They got to throw the dirt. They loved it. Let them throw the dirt <laughs> in, and it's great. You know, they get all dirty, and they're just so happy. And, and they were better behaved than the adult audience, I thought. They, they really just sat there. The teachers had them really well organized. Yep. And so this is our, I don't know, eighth or ninth year of being a Tree City USA. Mm -hmm. It's really an honor, right? I mean, it shows the sure. commitment that the town has to yeah. uh, to It's plant a very trees. nice event. And if you go now back onto the Millstream Trail, you can see some of those trees that have grown. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have one, I think the very first Tree City USA that we did, there's a tree that we planted, it, it's, uh, it's an elm tree, and I mean, it was a little stick of a tree, and now, I it's, mean, it's, it's, it's huge. Right? Good. Yeah. Planting trees is not a bad thing to show children how to do. Absolutely. And as Absolutely. soon as you told them they could throw the dirt and help plant a tree, you had 60 volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> they, they absolutely love that. that right? So, nice. uh, you know, when the other thing that we've done recently, um, we've repaved all the lanes at the cemetery. Okay. So if you used to drive down in the cemetery, the roads yeah. were in just very, yeah, sure. very bad rough. shape. The cemetery volunteer uh, crew, they're so great. They, they've raised a ton of money on their own. Good. The town was able to give them some money as well. And now we've got nice, good-looking lanes uh, to honor and, and respect the, the, the people who are, who are buried there. We put in a columbarium a couple of years ago as well. And so, you know, a lot of people today aren't, aren't being buried. They're, they're being cremated. Okay, and this is an option right. uh, for them to, to put their love. And it's a pretty well. beautiful spot. That's part of my walk. And that's a beautiful spot. Oh, and it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a great area. Yeah, it, it is a really great area. Uh, last year, we hired a new police chief. Uh, so uh, Chief Sabori is doing a great job. I taught Joe, great young man. Yep. yep not man. young anymore, Joe. I'm sorry, you're not young anymore. <laughs> I, I think he's still pretty young, he's but, very young, but he's doing a great job. And I think with that, uh, you know, a big focus on this new council is is really doing well, doing right by our employees, right? And and 
making sure that we're competitive and making sure that we're an employer of choice. You know, you, you think that some people think that it's it's uh, and you know anybody can come work here, but we really want to make sure that we keep people and, and we're not just spending money on training them and then they leave somewhere else. So and you're talking about doing something with retirement. Am I correct, or did I misunderstand that? No, that's correct. Okay. So uh, so so all the town employees are in the state pension program. Mm -hmm. um, there's a special program called LEOPS that the police uh, police organizations are in. And uh, we voted last night to actually include our police department Good, in LEOPS. Competitively, it helps uh, uh, in recruiting and retention. And, and, you know, a lot of the other allied agencies, whether it's the sheriff's departments or, or other municipalities around at the area, they've all got LEOPS. And so it's an, it's a, it's an enhancement to really make sure- And I hope you get better men and women on the force Absolutely. if they know they can get their 20 years or whatever it's going to be. Yep. Uh, they can retire. Well, good. That's a real good. I'm glad you did that. Yep. Yep. Which is very and, good. And again, that's one of those ones. It's been a, it's a difficult ex decision. It's an expensive decision. Yes, it is. But this council has come together and said, we want to do what's good. right. And we're going to make some of those tough choices. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, stimulus money, the town is receiving, this is from the federal stimulus money, we're getting about over, just over $4 million this year. Terrific. Over yeah, the next Where is years. that? Is that earmarked already or certain areas you can spend yeah, it so, in? Yeah, so, you know, it's the, the things that they've said that you can use it for is infrastructure. So okay. primarily water and sewer infrastructure. And we still have- Which the whole have, country needs. Yeah, yeah, we still have a lot of water and sewer infrastructure that we need to, to, to look at. Uh, and so, so the majority of the money is going to be going okay. towards, towards doing those. Thank things. you, Uncle Sam, right? He came through, right? Thank you, Which Uncle is very Sam. good. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, you know, you talk about the wharf area. We're redoing all the decking. So we've had a boardwalk there that's about 10 years old, and the boards are all in pretty bad shape. If you so. haven't walked that yet, in the morning, that's the most beautiful spot. It is. Quiet as it can be uh, between the blue heron, the fish running, just a gorgeous spot. I go out there with my dog sometimes at 7 a.m., and oh, you see beautiful. the bald eagles, oh. and sometimes the bald eagles are fighting with the ospreys, <laughs> but it's a, it's great, and it's, it's nice and spot. quiet, and it's, it is a beautiful spot. So we're redoing all the decking there. And we've a beautiful playground down there. Tell oh. the people about your playground. Yeah, so, I'm so amazed. It's, you know, the grant funding that we've gotten down there from building the boardwalk originally to putting the, uh, the, the playground in, that the playground now I think is just under two years old and it's used all the time, right? The main motivator was that when you have people who are putting their boats in, you know, it takes a little while to maneuver yeah, and get your kids boat need in, something to let do. the kids go over and play in the playground yeah. and it's used all the time. We just recently got a volunteer group put one of those little lending libraries down there, so it's full oh, of books. Great. Okay. So when mom and dad go down and what their kids are, are, they can sit there and they can. Tim, who book. just for the those that don't live in Centerville, remember this going everywhere. Uh, what is down? If I'm, it's a Saturday morning. Hey, what are we going to do today? Well, why would you tell them to come on, come up to Centerville Wharf? Besides, obviously, boat launching a boat or a kayak or something. What is at the wharf that people? Can I mean, it's there? a great view, right? It's, it's beautiful. One, in my opinion, beautiful. one of the best views in Centerville. We've got a boardwalk that goes all the way around. We've got picnic tables. It's a great place to go have a meal. You know, bring your kids down and, and do a picnic. We've got a little business down there that uh, that provides fishing uh, gear. So if you want to go fishing with the kids, he's got everything you need. Everything you need. Everything you bring you a fishing pole. You can get bait. You can get lures, you can get ice, you can get all that. And our fishing out there is fantastic. Oh, you, can catch, you can catch catfish that are too fish. On long. that bridge in the morning, as soon as that sun starts coming up, you see the people getting ready to go fishing. Yep. Who, we, we've uh, got, well, I want to keep going about the wharf, please, right? Please. We've got a kayak launch, so it's a it's Which a I use dock. and I love, yeah. You pull your car down, you pull your kayak out, you go park your kayak, you go park your car, and you can you know put your kayak right in. And you can take that all the way up to Mill Stream. Like I will take my canoe, oh, if you go to the left, bring my yeah. kids up, and sure. go right to Mill Stream. And for all you senior citizens out there, it's real senior citizen friendly. You can drive your car just about to this floating dock, carry the kayak in. It's a very gentle bend over and you can get out there. It's about a half, it takes me a half an hour to paddle up uh, the Gunston and come back. Mm -hmm. But it's very senior friendly. Yep. So don't, oh man, it's gonna be all this traffic. I gotta carry my, no, no. You can carry your kayak, 20 feet, you've got it made, and getting out is easy. That's the toughest thing for us old guys. Yeah, getting and, out of a and that way you don't have to compete with the boats that are trying no, to get in. It's no, totally separate. Totally separate. Yep. Uh, Tim, who uh, who else is renting down? We've got a baseball. Got uh, Mr. Bigby still doing baseball. Yep. So Bigby, you know, that's one of the what I think is is like one of the great complimentary businesses down there. So the original comp plan talked about 
a, a public-private partnership to have businesses down there that are complementary to the water-oriented structure. And so right. the great part about Big B's is that, that he's got softball, he's got baseball, you know, there's lacrosse in there, there's a little gym that's in there as well. And that's primarily used during the wintertime. So there's not boating traffic. So, so you've got kids that are there all the way from Delaware that are coming in on Saturday and a Sunday morning, yeah. and that place is taking packed. lessons. Now, does the town rent some of, to the left of Bigby's? If I'm looking at Bigby's is front and right in front of me, the tackle shop. I know the teachers' union for a while was renting part. Are there rental opportunities there if somebody wanted to rent? I'm not sure if there's anything available now. Okay. There might be. There might be. A, but a, there, a, the town is renting the facility. Right. It's just not sitting there empty. It's right. Well, I mean, used. and the upstairs yeah. is our finance office. Finance office okay. is there, and our director of public works has an office. What a there. view they have out that window. They Come do. on. You paying this guy or gal? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Tim, let me ask you this. Let's stay on the wharf. Yeah. Where do, put on your uh, magic hat here. Where do you see the wharf one, five, and ten years? Is it going to stay like it is? You want to develop it more? What do you, what do you think? Well, you know, we were talking about grants, right? And so mm -hmm. we've just recently got a grant last year that we're going to implement this year. As I said, we're we're redoing all the decking. Last year we got a grant to put electricity in and put water in. Okay. Uh, and so this year, with some of that grant money, we're going to actually put low-level lighting. Okay. Uh, we've already bought the lights, so once the decking is done, we're going to put in some low-level lighting that would provide electricity and some lighting out there. Right. Um, we've also got a grant that we're Gonna, that we're going to release this year, which is going to provide um, some little pavilions, so like little uh, p picnic pavilions, okay. there's three of them that are going to be going on okay. there, so it's going to be a little bit more developed. We also have a grant request in for a, for a band shell, so at the one far end, there's going to be a large band shell. So where the Shakespeare was in the park before, exactly. oh, and showing move, oh, and that's we, coming. Yeah, so you know, annually, we well, we hope we're going to get that grant, right? If not oh, this great. year, we'll get it next year. Do you have planned for this year uh, any performances, music? Music wise or Shakespeare you know, in a park I don't think we've got any music performances planned. We do have our annual um, outdoor movie, and okay. that is coming. It's the last Saturday in August. All right. I don't know what we're going to play yet this year, but we, you know, we do that in conjunction with the Corsica River Conservancy, yeah. and and they we have them run a fishing derby. So right on that the boardwalk. They've got 25 or 30 fishing poles. They provide mm. all the bait. They do it it's all. It's a fun time. And it's we give time. out we give out awards. We give out trophies. And it's a great thing to get young kids who have never fished before the opportunity. Mm. Even if they don't have a fishing pole, they can come down and win a trophy and catch a fish. And please, because I live near to, folks living down in Ken Island or anywhere in the county beside, and of course, Centerville, if you just want a little mini day trip, come up to the wharf. You can park. Just, you don't have to do a kayak and you don't have to be able to do a triple flip off in the gymnasium. <laughs> just sit and look up the river. It's magnificent. It really it's a is. just nice, easy trip. Plenty of nice places to eat and a nice, a nice day trip. Absolutely. I mean, Doc's restaurant is right there. You walk. It's a, you it's a walk. walk. You can even walk downtown and go to any sure. of the restaurants there as well. The other great thing that we finally got this year uh, was dredging. The Corsica River has been dredged. Right. So it's during low tide, it was really bad. And, and you know, some, some boats couldn't actually make it in or go out. And now that they They've dredged it. I, I hope that oh, there's so that's all more. done. That's it's terrific. all done. Yep, they finished it up in February. Very good. I'm hopeful that we'll get some more uh, boat traffic in there. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, like I said, that's a real nice trip. Uh, Tim, look at we, we're gonna, my guys are sticking with me. We haven't got a lot of time. Do me a favor, spend a couple minutes. Let's continue. And if you have more, please keep going. Where would you like? Where would you like to see Senevon one, five, and ten years? I mean, just pretend like it, we, we just made you king. You don't worry about money. All the people are screaming at Fred. Stop spending my money. Uh, pretend. What would you? What would you? Give me one, two, three priorities. Think about it for a second. What would you like to see in Senevon? Maybe we don't have, or we want to make better. Or if you, crystal ball. So, so what I would say is, is I'd like to enhance what we've got already. Right? Okay. We've got a great plan for a trail system. I would love for every person in this town to be able to walk or bike from Bloomfield Farm up in Northbrook sure. down to Symphony Village, be terrific. from the wharf oh, out to the YMCA. What a beautiful area. And so yeah. Getting that connectivity, I think, would be great. So everybody being able to walk, bike around the town, um, high-speed internet as well. I think that's going to be a key differentiator. Sure. You know, we're in a rural area. Yeah. A lot of people are leaving the cities, but we. Need to be able to stay competitive and, and having work from home. high speed, reliable fiber based internet throughout the town, I think, would be really, really important. Um, you know, and those are, those are, I guess, some of the things. We want someone to be, who's going to be able to, to be here, live here. Now that there's so much remote work, sure. people are able to stay home and, well, and, and work from home. The workplace has changed. Nope. Right. Companies are not going to rent expensive or buy buildings. 
Tim, yeah. work at home, work on your computer. Yeah, I mean, we do have a business, uh, a business park, and so there's opportunities for businesses to relocate here. Uh, and so there's, you know, that would be a great thing as well, is if we could figure out uh, some, some, some new developments in the business park that's already ready to go. Let me just ask, because it did come up in last night's town meeting, where are we on the Carter property? That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. And there's a trail issue there. Could you help the public understand what's going on there? Yeah, so, there, so, so the Carter Farm is, one of the, is, the histor is the historic Chesterfield property, right? And that's been... That essentially is what Centerville was carved out of in the 1790s. Uh, there's there's a farm there right now, and there's a development proposal. Uh, it's it's got some great ideas. There's an agricultural part of it, farm to table restaurant. Sounds terrific. Uh, yeah. Some development, you know, some some houses. And in our comp plans, we've had a, a, a trail, a perimeter trail. So whenever we have a development project come in, whether it's there, or whether it's somewhere else, we require walkability and we require some trails. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's been in the comp plan for a long time. The council decided last night that that the, the perimeter trail will be a, a requirement of, of that development, but there's such, such great opportunity uh, that's there for, for development. Well, all the morning walkers in the center, I mean, I'm up at six with a dog and it's just amazing. They'd love to have a yep. trail where they go to the wharf area, do the trail, that type of thing, and it, it would be perfect, a great addition, which would, would be. be kind of fun. Uh, let me end up with this. Uh, what do you see in terms of growth? Are we, have we hit the, you think we've hit it in terms I, of I center? I think we're close. I mean, you know, okay. one of the things that we're looking at now, and we talk about the stimulus money, is, is that we need to figure out uh, our growth. We're getting to the point where our- Where are our, we now? What's the, what's the number we can use? Are we 7,000? Uh, no, I think we're probably, well, you know, we, we haven't gotten the numbers from the census, but I think right. we'll probably end up around 5,000. 5,000, When okay. it all comes down. All right. um, you know, we're gonna need to, to investigate uh, expanding our water and wastewater treatment plant. Mm -hmm. We're going to need to investigate uh, a new farm, which is a, where we have to spray our, our effluent. Uh, we're going to need to investigate in, um, increasing our, our water uh, facility, right? Sure. So, so those are all going to be decisions that the council is going to have to make if we are going to grow. Right. You know, we're, we've got still some things like Carter Farm that can grow interior. We've got the business park that can grow. We've got the YMCA, I think, that's going to, you know, that's going to sure. help dictate some growth as How well. How about the I mean, a terrapin farm? A terpen farm. Mm -hmm. Where where are we with that? You know, I there, call it the you might. No, I, no, I know, absolutely. So the Turpin Farm was purchased about a year and a half ago, and there's an element of commercial that's there, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's an element of residential. So hopefully the, um, the, the Maryland Women's Museum is going to relocate up there, and, oh, and great. we're working through some zoning issues about getting that uh, allowed to be up there. Uh, that would go in the historic home, and there's a, there's a great old cemetery that's back there that sure, will yeah. be preserved as well. And then the part of the, of the property that's next to, or that's the commercial part, uh, the, the Planning Commission just approved the site plan for expanding out um, the, stor the storage facility that's there as well. Okay. So that'll so be, there'll be some all, type, all types of good things going on yep. there. Yep. And as a part of that site plan, the developer is going to have to put in some more um, buffer yard or, or you know, trees and whatnot sure. in front of, the, in front of the, uh, the existing storage facility that's okay. there now. Now, I've interrupted you 33 times. Do you have any other hot items no, you want so to you talk know, about? The, the only yeah. other thing I wanted to plug is, is yeah. volunteers, right? So oh, tell me, please. We have boards and commissions in the town that, that really make things work, right? We've got great employees, but we've got uh, you know, laypersons, uh, members of the town that that, that come in and they serve on our boards. Last night, we, um, April is typically the time when we, uh, we re-up our volunteers. Right. We had um, one individual last night that came in and he's been volunteering for the town in certain capacities for 50 years. 50 years. Another one that we swore in has been working, supporting the town as a volunteer for 30 years. Oh, wow. And then we had two Perfect. others that we swore in that were here three months and nine months. And that's fine. So, you know, volunteers are the lifeblood of the town. We always need more volunteers. Sure. We've got... Uh, openings on the planning commission. We've got openings on the personnel review board. The parks board is always looking for more people as well. So if anybody has any interest in volunteering for the town, whether it's, you know, one one night a year or, or, board or, whatever. or every month, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, we, we've got Who do they kind of, if someone's watching this program, gee, I have some time. Who, what do you want them to do? Go to the I, website I would say, or call? You know, go to the website, townofcenterville.org, or okay. if they have more, uh, you know, if they want to talk to somebody, call Town Hall, 410-758-1180. Okay. And, and uh, I want everyone to know, you can call Tim or you can call the town, and they always are open for new suggestions. They're all looking for new ideas. And so don't be afraid to call them. Doesn't matter whether you live in Centerville or not. You Centerville people, we all want you on boards. But come up, my Kent Island people, I'm down there in your trail. I love it. We're <laughs> one county. We're the county seat. We all want to share all the good, positive things we have. Uh, Tim, last question. Anybody does, whether it's trash, 
What's the procedure? I just they have a question to you, or they have a question to the town, other than volunteering. What's the procedure? The best thing for them to do is is either send an email, okay. town hall at, at townofcenterville.org, Center, okay. or or make a phone call. Fall, okay. you know, call the town hall. It's very and it, easy. And the town's terrific. Uh, professional staff, the elected officials, and calling people and asking for help. Absolutely. Well, Tim, I've got a tough day ahead. I'm going to go to Dunkin' Donuts, get my vanilla chai, watch my granddaughter play tennis. It's a tough day. This has been a great time, Fred. I, I'm, well, I'm so thankful that you had me here on your Well, first, we want the town time. to come on because we want the whole county to realize we've got a lot of great little towns and that we live in a wonderful county. Thanks for being my first guest. Thank all you. Right? I'm Fred McNeil. Thank you for watching A Conversation With. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time.